Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I am so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some here with me. Today, I'd like to talk about quitting and how we attribute significance to quitting. So I'm sure that you've heard before, winners don't quit. Or you've heard somebody say, I'm no quitter. In what may be a really challenging situation, that they're not pleased with, that they're struggling with, that they're having a hard time in. And they want to persevere through something hard. And what they're calling that is not quitting. Or they're not sure if they want to be there, whatever that situation is. I've heard it in academia. I've had it. I've heard it in work where somebody will tell me, I'm not a quitter. And I think that that's a really interesting thing to say. I think it's a really interesting sentiment to bring because sometimes we need to make the decision to stop doing something for our advancement. And so not every form of stopping doing something is quitting. So what I want to do today is take a really critical look at what quitting actually means. And when Quitting something or making the decision to stop doing something is actually to your benefit, not your detriment. When we think about quitting, there tends to be this connotation that if you quit, you haven't lived up to some expectation, you will be disappointing somebody or yourself, that you don't have what it takes to cut it, that you haven't put in the time that you didn't put in the effort, that something is wrong with you. But here's the thing. What if that thing that you are thinking about quitting or that you're talking about in such a way that, you know, you're, you're telling yourself or others, I'm no quitter. What if your choice to stay doing that thing is actually preventing your advancement from happening or from happening more quickly? Now, I'm not suggesting at all that we shy away from challenges or that we don't deal with hard situations. We absolutely do, and we have to. That's part of our journey, is learning how to deal with those challenges, learning how to deal with really tough things. But what I want you to think about is what you're actually saying, what you're, what you're actually, what the meaning is behind your thought that you want to stop doing something. And I think that this is a really important thing to talk about on our advancement journeys at any stage, right? It doesn't have to be academia. We work with young professionals, people who are applying to professional opportunities. We work with with senior professionals who are looking to transition out of opportunities into new ones. We work, of course, as you know, with university graduate and professional school applicants. And something that we talk about all the time is how to strategize. We strategize through really tough situations academically with professors, with referees, with verifiers, with, our, with people in our professional networks. So by no means am I suggesting that things should be easy. They are often not. I'm also not suggesting that things are simple. They are often very complicated with many layers that we have to consider. But what I am suggesting is that if you reach a point where you find yourself saying, I'm not a quitter, I want you to think about why you're saying that and what the circumstance is that you find yourself in. For example, you don't hear people who are up for a promotion saying, I'm no quitter. I'm staying in that old role because I'm no quitter. You don't hear that. Often when you hear this 
sentiment, I'm no quitter or I'm not quitting, those are often in situations that, in my experience, we're not quite sure about. We're not quite sure what to do with these situations. The easy thing may be to stay in that situation. And the harder thing may be to strategize for your advancement to your next step. And so I want to sort of flip the script on this, thinking that quitting is bad. And I want to reframe this idea of quitting as critical analysis that you are doing of your life, of your choices, of your current circumstance, and of your next steps with intentionality and thought. Now, I also am not a fan of making rash decisions or impulsive decisions. I think that we need to think really, really carefully through decisions. And, you know, if you're as part of our community, what you'll know for sure is that nothing is ever a simple answer with me. You ask a question and it's a very, could be a very short question. And we end up talking through it for quite some time because there are so many layers, so many perspectives sometimes so many people involved, and we want to make sure that we're making the right decision for you. So one of the things that I think is so important to bring to this conversation is the intentionality behind our decisions. And this may come up and we have really hard feelings around, for example, switching goals, changing our career path or our academic trajectories. And you may feel a sense of failure if you decide that that you, for example, want to transition out of one program into another, or you want to transition out of one career into another. I've talked about my journey on the podcast several times. And if you've listened to our earlier episodes, Probably, for example, episode two, where I talk about my journey, and also in our episode on reframing failure, which, and we'll link to both of those in the show notes, that there are times in my own journey that I have thought to myself, I'm no quitter. One was when I was right on the cusp of deciding not to apply back to medical school. I decided that that path was not the right one for me. But I still, even though I had decided that wasn't the right path for me, I still felt like I was quitting something, like I was going to disappoint people, like I was, like there was more that was expected of me that I wasn't fulfilling and I was disappointed in that. And so these feelings of, oh my gosh, am I a quitter came up. And when I think back to those times that I was making really important academic and professional decisions for myself, I often, or maybe every single time, had this gut instinct that this path was not the right one for me and I needed to make a decision to actually productively pursue a new path critically, thoughtfully, intentionally. And I had to work on understanding that I wasn't quitting. I was actually making intentional choices that would get me where I wanted to go. Part of this question is always, where do you want to go? What do you actually want to accomplish? What kind of life do you want? We talk about all of these things in our coaching together. And the reason that we do that is because what you want, not what other people want for you, if those, those sometimes may align, other times they may not. The kind of life that you want, how you want to feel in your life are such important questions to ask yourself and to answer in your journey. And so there has to be intentionality behind your decisions and intentionality and thoughtfulness has to come from within. We've also talked about internal versus external validation on this podcast. And so we'll link to that episode in the show notes as well. And so I'm bringing internal versus external validation up here because We have to be able to think about ourselves and our lives independently of what other people think we should be doing or other people's judgments of our decisions. Like I said, those things 
may align, what other people want for us, especially people who care about us, what they want for us and what we want for ourselves may very well be in alignment with each other. But maybe there are some steps in the middle that you don't quite agree on, right? Generally, parents want their kids to be successful. Parents want their kids to be happy. The reason I bring up parents is because clients will often say to me, well, I want this, my parents want that. So I end up doing what they want me to do and not what I want to do. And I saw this also in law school with my peers and even among some of my professional network when I told them, and I think I've told this story on the podcast before, when I told them that I, you know, when I was finished my PhD, that I was, a, that I was going to law school next, so many lawyers said to me, why would you do that? Like they didn't, and, and where that came from was that they didn't enjoy being a lawyer. And so I would ask them, I would say, well, why are you, like, you are a lawyer. Like, why are you saying that to me? And they would say to me, well, I, you know, when I was applying to law school and when I was in law school, I never actually understood what it would be like to practice law every single day. And what I'm realizing now is I just don't like it. And so I would always follow up and say, okay, well, why did you go to law school if you weren't sure about it? And what they would tell me is, well, my parents wanted me to go. Like I've heard this so many times. And what that indicates to me is not that they didn't have support. It's not that they didn't have the ability to do what they wanted to do. It was that no one had asked them these questions of what do you want your life to look like? How do you want to feel in your life? Who do you want to be spending your time with? What kinds of clients do you want to be spending your time with? How do you want your days to look? How do you want your evenings to look? How do you want your nights to look? And I'll tell you that because I have spent so much time and energy thinking about my own journey in a really thoughtful way, in my law firm, I have created a practice where I am living the life that I want and the firm and the way that we structure the work facilitates the kind of life that I want. And it's not just about me anymore because we have I have my partner at the firm who's also my husband and we have a new family lawyer. And when I bring people on to work as part of our team, whether it's at Apply Yourself or at our law firm, I always have a conversation with them. What do you want your life to look like? Because this is not the thing that's going to make them miserable. Nothing about working in our firm, nothing about the environment is going to make them miserable. And I say that with confidence because I care so much about what people want for themselves that I have created an environment that helps to facilitate the kinds of lives that people want, certainly the people that are part of our team. And it extends to our clients, right? When we are happy with our lives and what we're doing and the progress that we're making and the kind of environment that we're working in, it extends to our clients because we are able to serve them. And at Apply Yourself, we are able to serve our clients in the same way because we have created this environment where in its creation, in its structure, in the systems, we are not miserable. We are not struggling. We're not working from a place of work being mandatory. We're working from a place of actually being passionate about what we're doing. So I bring this intention to everything that I do. And that creates environments for other people to grow and do exactly what they want to do. And when I bring this intention, all of a sudden, when I'm making another decision, the question is not, am I quitting? The question is, where do I want to go from here? We all have forks in the road, some bigger than others at certain times we will all face small forks and big forks in the road. When we're choosing one direction instead of another, it's the thought and intention behind the decision that makes the decision one that will never be one of quitting with that negative connotation. And instead, what it will be is making an intentional, thoughtful decision that takes you closer to your goals, that takes you closer to your vision for your life. 
how you want to feel the people that you want to have around you. So as you move forward from this episode, I want you to think about a situation that you're currently in that maybe you're not sure about. Maybe you think to yourself, well, you know, I, what if, what if making this decision is quitting? I'm not a quitter, so I'm going to stay. I want you to think about whether staying is something that you're doing because you actually enjoy what you're doing and there is upward mobility with what you're doing, whether it's academically, whether it's at a company versus whether you're choosing to stay out of fear because you're afraid of that next step. You're afraid of putting yourself out there. You're afraid of the challenges that you might face if you take that next step, but that next step you feel is the right one. And I want you to think about why you're making that decision, whether you choose to stay, whether you choose to move, right? I didn't say stay or go. I said stay or move because we're always, we are always advancing and you're making moves and it's all about making decisions and choices that will be and that will lead you to your next best step. In one of our coaching sessions the other day, one of our members brought up that they weren't sure what their next move was. And so what they did was went around to different people in their lives and they asked those people, what do you see me doing? What do you think I should be? What do you think I should pursue? What do you think I'd be good at? Where do you see me? And I thought that this was really interesting because here we are back at the conversation of internal versus external validity, hoping to get answers from other people who can't, who maybe don't know your trajectory, who maybe don't know what you're thinking, how you're feeling, what your hopes are, because often we don't share those things with people, right? We don't share these really tough moments of decision-making and how we feel with other people, whether we think it's because they're not interested or they won't understand or we don't want to talk about it, they're too, we're too busy, they're too busy, they don't have time for this conversation. Or these conversations take time. That's why our coaching is weekly. These conversations take time. The steps take time to accomplish. And we need to strategize through your different next best steps. Because at any given time, your next best step could be one of 10. And your next best steps, you could be working on five out of the 10, depending on how we how, how they're prioritized, depending on deadlines, depending on what's going on. And so having this understanding that advancement takes time and that considering what our next best steps are also takes time. Having one-off conversations with people who don't know how you're thinking and feeling won't actually be all that helpful because what they could say to you is, oh, you know, you're, you're great at this. So you, so you would be successful doing that. And it may be true. Maybe you are great at whatever that was. But that's not what will determine your success because you could be great at a lot of things. And I'm sure you are. We are all great at a lot of things. We don't give ourselves credit for it, but we are. And so those conversations with people can actually take us further away or slow down our progress because they, those conversations, when those people are not informed about how you're thinking, feeling over the course of time, can cause you to actually question yourself. And that's not actually necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes it causes us to have critical, to to actually critically think about what it is that we're doing, why we want to do something. But without the support and the strategy and the, the training on mindset, on progress, on intentional progress, what other people's beliefs are for us can make us feel insecure. And this is what I see most often is that insecurity follows from these conversations with other people about what do you think I should be doing? What do you think I should be doing? And I'm not talking about people who are actually in your life day to day who understand and know truthfully what it is that you're thinking and feeling and doing. I'm talking about reaching out to maybe friends who who aren't sure not only about 
your trajectory and your options, but also about theirs. And so I think that it's really important that when we think about intentionality behind our decision making, that you are developing that skill of asking yourself the right questions and really being honest with yourself. And often that can start out with a visualization exercise, which is a large part of how we start here. And your goals can change, right? That understanding that goals can change, that your trajectory can change is really important because it helps you understand that what you may be previously thought of as quitting is actually a really intentional and great move for you. Maybe you're also afraid. Maybe you also have some fear around it. And that's okay because if it's the right choice, we can do hard things and be fearful or scared or insecure at the same time if it's the right move. So I want you to think of something that you're working through. I want you to think of a decision that you're making, big or small. And I want you to think to yourself, at this fork in the road or in this decision, am I quitting or am I making an intentional move? Am I making an intentional, thoughtful decision about my growth? Because what I would say is that if your next move is one that's going to take you further, then limiting yourself by staying would actually be quitting on yourself, on your future on everything that you could have, on that life that you want so badly that you're afraid to think of it, that life that you hope for so much that you are hesitant to even think about. If that's you, I want you to send me a DM at Apply Yourself Global on Instagram or send me an email to adrian at applyyourselfglobal.com, A D R. I-E-N-N-E at applyyourselfglobal.com. And let me know if this resonates with you. And let me know what the decision is that you're working through because I'm really interested in helping you build that life beyond your wildest dreams. And first we have to call it like it is. We have to name it and then we have to work for it and strategize through it. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at applyyourselfglobal and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.